Hi everybody! In this YouTube video, the purpose is to explain the Elysium Industries nuclear waste burner briefly and clearly. And why do I take that very reactor as an example? Well, simply because he is so simple to explain. Our current nuclear waste that you hear so much about in the media is not waste. And for one thing, the representation is falsified. Nuclear waste is stored properly and safely. And second, this nuclear waste is still 96% usable in the waste burners under construction or in the already long established Russian waste burners like the BN600 or the BN800, etc. And how do we go about it? Well, our old used fuel rods, a series of tubes containing uranium pellets, as shown in the figure, we are going to cut into pieces. Pieces of plus minus one centimeter long. We melt those pieces in an oven and mix those, those whole thing with table salt. And we add some weapon plutonium because some countries want to get rid of this too, and we get a liquid hole that we throw into our reactor vessel. That molten salt mixture that we poured into the reactor only boils at 1400 degrees Celsius and solidified if you operate below the 450 degrees Celsius. So that results in a wide margin in which the reactor can operate safely. Of course, we are going to do everything we can to ensure that the reactor never goes below the 450 degrees Celsius, because then everything is stuck. And we can see that the reactor automatically stabilized at a certain temperature. I'll explain how that works later. Preferably, around the 600 degrees Celsius. If we want a higher temperature, we add more fuel, or we add more fissile material, more waste or more plutonium. And if we want the temperature to be a little bit lower, we add more salt mixture, so that everything dilutes. This type of reactor, waste burner, regulate itself automatically. Without control devices, the hotter the salt solution becomes, the less waste fission takes place, the less heat is produced. Reactivity control in the short term is done through the negative temperature coefficient. This means, as the temperature of the reactor vessel, thus nuclear waste salt mixture, rises, the fuel salt expands, and some of the fuel salt is removed from the reactor, squeezed out. So, fewer fissions occur, and less heat is produced. Long-term reactivity adjustments occur through online additions of nuclear fuel, nuclear waste. The fuel may also be transferred actively or passively to the dump tank, where it is held in a subcritical configuration. And subcritical simply means that the nuclear reaction of the nuclear waste stop. Or explained another way, the hotter the fuel salt mixture gets, the farther apart the uranium and plutonium atoms to be fissioned become, and the less the neutrons hit. As a result, there are fewer nuclear fissions, and less heat is produced, so the temperature of the fuel salt mixture drops. But this brings the nuclei to be fissioned closer together again, and the neutrons hit more and more, so that the temperature rises again, etc. And rest assured, such a salt mixture stabilizes fully automatically at a certain acceptable temperature 
of about 600 degrees Celsius. And on this slide, I will give an overview of everything that we can split, burn in such a nuclear waste burner. From plutonium to enriched and depleted uranium, all spent fuel rods, nuclear waste, natural uranium, yes, even thorium combine it with a quantity of uranium. And here we see again the setup of such a nuclear reactor, a waste burner. You see the grey reactor vessel and note, elysium only works with one kind of reactor vessel, equal how big the nuclear power plant is. The reactor vessel and the primary circuit are not pressurized. That just contains a molten salt solution. Also be aware that we can refill this reactor without shutting down the nuclear power plant. This allows the reactor to continue to operate for a very long time without stopping, even without doing anything about the contents the reactor can operate for over 40 years. We also see on the figure a primary pump, a secondary pump, a primary heat exchanger and a secondary heat exchanger. For the sake of clarity, I've summarized that again on a schematic representation. So you see that grey reactor vessel. The heat is extracted from that, moved, through the primary pump P1 to the primary heat exchanger. And the primary heat exchanger transfers the heat to a second circuit. The second circuit also contains a liquid salt mixture, all true without nuclear waste or radioactive material. And this liquid salt passes heat through pump P2 to a secondary heat exchanger. The secondary heat exchanger can then transfer this heat to a helium gas or a CO2 gas or generate steam to a to drive a gas turbine or a steam turbine, respectively, which in turn drive an electricity generator. And then the whole thing is set up in a liquid salt bot. No, not a water bot, because that boils at 100 degrees Celsius. And then there are the problems of steam and hydrogen production. No, we don't want that. So we take a liquid salt mixture a salt mixture that boils at 1400 degrees Celsius and solidifies when it drops below the 450 degrees Celsius, that salt mixture has nothing to do with nuclear power. It's an ordinary salt mixture that collects the heat from all the components and it kept at a constant temperature by a heat pipe. And you can see the heat pipe on the figure. So in the above is immersed both the reactor vessel, the primary and the secondary heat exchanger, and that brown one down there, the drain tank. And on this slide, you can see two green tubes at the bottom of the reactor vessel, as well as a green tube at the bottom of the primary heat exchanger. Now, through these tubes, both the radioactive fuel salt mixture from the reactor vessel and from the primary heat exchanger continuously flows to the drain tank. Of course, the primary pump as well as the small pumps colored brown above the long green tubes will continuously pump the salt fuel mixture from the drain tank into the reactor. And under normal circumstances, more fuel salt mixture is pumped than drained. There is also an overflow pipe that ensures that the fuel salt mixture level in the reactor is always constant. So Elysium does not use an electro valve or a manual shut-off valve or a freeze plug. No, the reactor vessel and the primary pump contents are continuously draining into the drain tank. This means 
that in an event of a severe natural disaster in which all the electricity is cut off or in which all the operators of the nuclear power plant start to run, the reactor vessel and the entire primary circuit content will empty into the drain tank, where the nuclear reaction will immediately stop. The residual heat caused by the fission elements in the drain tank, as well the heat from the primary and the secondary heat exchangers, and from the reactor vessel, is given off to the salt pool. And the heat pipe, also a heat exchanger, will release the abundance of heat to the environment through natural air circulation and without moving parts, without resources. And the heat pipe will also ensure that the salt mixture in the bed and the radioactive salt mixture in the drain tank are not cooled too much so that everything remains liquid. And such a heat pipe works without moving parts and does not require energy. And you can find the same heat pipe in any cell phone, laptop or computer. And on this slide we see that this type of reactor is a modular reactor. Yet one always works with the same type and size of nuclear reactor vessel. Increased power is made possible in steps by adding additional or larger components, such as pumps and heat exchangers. And by placing the reactor underground, the plant is protected from airborne hazards, such as aircraft and tornadoes. And due to the chemical ionic salt binding of the fission products and the natural freezing of the salt in the event of a leak, the likelihood of radioactive materials being dispersed into the air becomes unlikely, and security costs are reduced. We may clearly speak of an inherently safe nuclear reactor here. The Belgium nuclear waste stockpile is about a soccer field in size and a half a meter high. So for Belgium, the Elysium nuclear waste burner is really one of the solutions to turn our nuclear waste mountain into a profitable fuel supply. Our nuclear waste is not waste, no. It is pure fuel because it is only 4% split, burn it. This means that 96% of our waste is still fissionable, or we can continue for 24 times 40 years. So Belgium can continue making electricity with this waste for 960 years. I know 960 years is a long time, but if we also use the same plant to generate process heat for our industry, Think of our steel, aluminium, chemistry, glass factories, or to produce hydrogen, or desalinate water, etc. Well, then everything will be processed in 100 years. But that's not all. Belgium also has a mountain of depleted uranium. This pile of uranium can also be used to burn up fission in the Elysium waste burner. So Belgium can then continue with its nuclear waste mountain for about thousand years to generate both electricity and process heat. And in the meantime, our waste mountain will reduce from a half a meter high to only five millimeters. And the storage time will be reduced by a factor of thousand. These are clear scientific figures, but still not everyone is pro, because of dogmatic views of certain politicians and parts of the population, but also by the oil producing sector, the car industry and the renewable energy sector. 